So I've been doing some testing with the Zen server, the XCPNG flavor of it. So uh, I've done in the past with Citrix Zen server. Uh, I'm a fan of Zen server. I'm less a fan of the way Citrix has gone with Zen server and really eliminated some of the features. So this video is about the XCPNG Zen server. Now they, they're in beta release, but for a beta, I'm really impressed. I've been testing it for about a week. I've loaded it on both my uh, one of my backup machines and my uh, home machine, which runs a handful of VMs in the backup one is more for testing and uh, lab stuff we do. But I haven't had any problems with it uh, for, for a product that they you know, said is a beta. They've done a great job of doing it. Now, a lot of the people involved in this project are the same people involved in Zen Orchestra. Um, so they have a vested interest in this product. Now, one thing I always like is open source things that also have some type of business model attached to them because those are the projects that last. Those are projects uh, that you know, I generally go really well, especially when you have the properly minded people running them. Um, this is, you know, the success story of Red Hat is having an operating system that is open source, but selling support packages. And that's actually their business model as well. They sell both the Zen Orchestra, they have a paid support version, and they have the uh, Pro support, uh, which it says coming soon, which is they set up a website. So you have the xcpng.org and xcpng.com, which is going to be the uh, Parade support. And this is great because a lot of people are want to deploy something. Maybe they want to play with it uh, in the lab or at home. And this is wonderful because you can get the full featured version with limited amount of support. But for those running enterprise who have a lot of complicated setups and they go, you know, I really want to be able to call someone who's an expert on this because, uh, you know, running it's easy, but some of the complicated setups, they have an option for that where you can get paid support. That's something they're working on. Like I said, this is a great way, in my opinion, to support any of these projects. Now, bring you through the install real quick and what it is and what it isn't. So if you're not familiar with Zen Server at all, pretend you've never uh, heard of it. It's a type one hypervisor, which means it installs on the bare metal and is a uh, completely loaded on the machine. It is a server in enterprise ready, well run in a lot of enterprises. Uh, Zen Server is very popular. It's very big. Uh, it's a really great product, in my opinion. So really simple, you download the ISO, which they have a link here, and I'll leave a link to this, it's easy to find. Um, download it, copy it to a USB or burn it to a CD, whatever the methodology you're gonna load it on the server, uh, make sure you get a server ready for it. And they, uh, there's also, you can Google the uh, system requirements for it, but generally uh, have plenty of hard drive space and plenty of memory because you're gonna be running a bunch of virtual machines. Um, so most modern processors support virtualization. Uh, there's a whole list on there that's a little like, not hard to find all that. Uh, their current version is 7.4. They're actually following the same versions as a Citrix N server. The install was really straightforward. Nothing here. I didn't do a video directly on the install because it's it's next and yesing your way through with a bunch of menus. There's nothing complicated or uh, hard about it at all. One really cool feature that they added, uh, you can upgrade Zen to Zen server or perform a clean installation. Now I've done both. I built one server clean and the other server, I went and did a upgrade. So I took my home server and I backed it up first just in case because they do say it's beta, uh, but I did an in-place upgrade of Citrix Zen server and it worked great. I, it uh, managed all my VMs, none of, the, none of the VMs crashed, none of them had any problems. Um, so I've done both now and been running it and it's not had any issues at all. So that's that was wonderful to hear. Now, the installation, uh, the only thing they skipped right here is there's a spot where it asks you about networking. You can say DHCP or set your network address, um, and you select all the hard drives you want to provision for it. So if you have a hard system with multiple drives in it, you can provision those uh, for the setup. Also, you, in case you're wondering, you do want to enable thin provisioning. Um, the, you can look up what thin provisioning is, but that's one other option. Other than that, these screenshots will walk you through the setup. It's really straightforward. I do like the logo on boot. This is what it looks like on the screen. And then you're into the management console that you see at the direct console. Now, the first thing you're probably asking is, well, how do I manage it? Because you can't use the Citrix Windows Zen Center thing. Well, that's where we have this. Uh, and I know it, this is, you can just import VMs and download and import them. You can do it all from the command line. Some people aren't as adept at that. So what you can do is SSH in, copy, and I have a console pulled up over here, paste. And if you literally run in there and by the way, I did customize my terminal here. Uh, once you log into Zen Server, you can go in here and pull in and deploy the Zen Orchestra tool. 
Now, this there's two different versions in orchestra. There's the community edition, which you have to build yourself, and I may do a video on that sometime. Uh, but you can get you, this gives you the appliance version, which is all set up, configured. You don't have to know anything to get this thing running. Um, and once it's up and running, you can log into the Zen Orchestra. And I'm actually going to go into the one it deploys, which is this one right here. Um, and you can go in and see it working. Now, this is our XTP NG backup, and I called test box. We just built a second box uh, to show it working, but haven't had any problems at all with it. Uh, like I said, everything works really well. It's a great replacement. Now, some of the downsides that some people have pointed out. If I want to use the uh, new VM, I can create VMs all day and things like that. But some people, one of the things I like about ZenServer is the ability to import different types of OVA files. That unfortunately, if we do an import, is only for the full version of this, or you can load the community edition. Like I said, this is an important distinction I wanted to make because some people say, well, I can't import my VMs, so I don't like it as much. You can still do these things from the command line. You can still import XVAs from the command line, um, but you do need to either pay for support, buy a license from them, or roll roll your own and this is actually my own server I rolled that has the entire version of it's the same thing but if you notice it's got the no support down here uh, this is the other version so it's still the same software but this is the appliance version which has an updater built in which is why the little checkbox there this has no updater built in this is the community edition but you get all the features and there's always some people argue about that and as a methodology of open source they're like well it's really open source i'm like no what you're paying is for the labor it takes to build and maintain this entire package but they give you all the source code for free if you want to build and maintain it yourself um, so there's that but i will leave you with a link on uh how to get that how to get that version but most people to get started you're going to start with this and in general it does most of the basic things you need to do. So, you know, I have, uh, here's a demo, here's the console, here's me starting a VM. Not a problem here. Uh, it works perfectly fine. It has the console inside of here. The only thing you really lose is, I think if I click the, yeah, this, I can't just copy a VM to another machine, but I can fork and migrate them back and forth between machines. Also, one of the things you may be wondering, feature support, Zen Motion and things like that, moving machines uh, between two separate hosts, no problem. So I can move my virtual machines around, I can snapshot them, all the features and all that are in here and that works. You're just, you don't get some of the import features and you have to do them from the command line, uh, which aren't that hard to do. Uh, importing things from the command line is pretty straightforward in uh, Zen Server. So it's... Overall, I'm really happy with the product. I'm gonna do some more videos later on it, and I'll probably do an install video on how to get Zen Orchestra Community. I'll leave you the link on how to actually download it, though it's pretty straightforward. This will walk you through how to install from source all the Zen Orchestra and get essentially the full version, because some people like to see all the uh, stats and everything else. So for, oh, me, yeah, this one here, dashboard, this is what it looks like in case you're wondering. So you can get uh, statistics, health reports, overview of your servers attached to it, things like that. So if you want the full blown, all the features uh, one without paying for it, there's some rules. Uh, the rules are it's not commercially supported at all. You have to handle all the updates. Uh, you have to go through the install process, building a VM and installing all this. It does not install directly on the XCPNG. You build this onto a virtual machine and then you run that virtual machine with it on here uh, they've got really good documentation i followed it it was pretty easy to install i will leave you with something though to make it even uh, one step easier i have on my uh, system here i i did fork this i'm not the package maintainer so uh, it may be broken at some point and maybe look at the original package maintainer i'm going to try to keep it up to date um, I use this one to install on a Debian 9 system and it worked perfectly fine. I forked it because I did have to make a change because there was a problem with the way it was uh, doing the logs and the problem might be me. <laughs> so I know this works on there, but the original package maintainer is in here. So you can see from where I forked this from. So if you go to the original package maintainer, and I'll leave this in the description below, um, they have a Docker image and everything that you can get for this and set it up, which is great. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, they do have a couple the repository things that you need to have uh, installed in order to make this work. So these are the different tools. Like I said, this is 
I like the way they do this. Uh, some people are like, well, it's not open source unless they give me a fully compiled, fully supported version. No, you do have to do a little bit of work yourself on there, uh, which means you know updating packages and managing it, which is a big part of, because uh, there's a lot of components that go into building it. So it's a big part of it is how to maintain it. But um, it does work if you want the full version to be able to import export. But overall, I'm really happy with XCPNG. Uh, it works great. I haven't had, like I said, been running it for a week without any issues. Uh, I've got it running at home, got it running on backup servers and test servers here. All the migration works between the VMs. Uh, no headaches so far. Like I said, uh, the only thing I can't demo for you, though, is the um, live migration. It is supported, but I don't have two machines with matching processors. A lot of people have asked about that going, hey, how's the live migration work? I'm like, you need to have the best way to do it is get two pretty much identical machines because if you have different processor support in there, operating systems are aware of the processor. So the live migration or any HA stuff, same problem. You need matching machines. I just don't have uh, identical machines to try some of that, to uh, do some of that uh, features, to do the migration between an, in a live demo. But I can tell you the migration works perfectly fine in here. So if we want to copy this to another server, no problem. You can, whoops, you can just select it, uh, copy the VM over to another server, migrate it to another server, select the storage repository. This is not a problem. I've done this. I've moved them around. Uh, didn't have any issues with it. So I may do some more like in-depth videos on like processes by which you do that and how you handle it. And we're actually building another Windows 7 VM in here. Like I said, we've tested it with Windows and Linux. Um, it's not had any problems at all. So that's an overview of uh, the XCPNG, getting it set up, getting installed. And uh, like I said, the Zen Orchestra, if you just load their appliance version, it's easy, it works good. And uh, maybe then you'll want to, once you're in the appliance, create a new VM and then try loading this one. Like I said, you can load it from the sources if you want all the features and all the bells and whistles. Um, I may do a more in-depth video on that because I'm still working out a couple things that I had to do when I set it up. I want to make sure I have a clean process to show you guys. But for the most part, if you're decent at Linux um, and lo loading packages, you can get that set up. All right, so if you like the content here, like and subscribe. Uh, if you got uh, some questions about Zen server or suggestions for videos, leave them in the comments below. I do my best to read through all the comments or jump on the Lawrence Systems forums, which there's a link for in the description as well. And of course, I'll be leaving a link to all the things I talked about in the description so you can download and play with this yourself and uh, see if you like it. Like I said, it's in beta, so I don't you know recommend deploying it for production, uh, but it works really well. Like I said, a week of testing and I'm real happy with it. So once again, thanks and uh, leave suggestions and stuff in the comments below.